Say it with me. Let's play hockey. The Minnesota Wild opens up its regular season Thursday, and Kirsten and I could not be more ready. Shorter preseasons, please. And all aboard the BC Gravy Train as one Buttes listener shares how he's competing to bring a harrowing title home to Minnesota. As always, we're created by New Voice Studios, presented by Soda Stick, brought to you by Talk North, Jim Beam, Livia, Grain Belt, and Royal Credit Union. This is Season 5, Episode 198. Not only is SodaStick.com the only place to get your official Marcus Foligno fan club tee, but it's also the only place to get all your favorite wild team garb, plus so much more beyond hockey. Use code BARDOWNBEAUTIES for 15% off your total purchase at SodaStick.com. At Jim Beam, they know the importance of tradition. Like chanting, let's play hockey prior to the start of each game, or playing the state of hockey anthem after a wild win. This season, raise one to your fan family with the bourbon that invites us all to come as friends and leave as family. Jim Beam Bourbon Whiskey, the official bourbon whiskey partner of the Minnesota Wild and XL Energy Center. Drink smart, Jim Beam Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume. Copyright 2021, James B. Beam Distilling Company, Incorporated, Fairmont, Kentucky. Hello, everybody. What's up? We're back. Bar Down Beauties, episode 198. As always, I'm Jesse Pierce, writer for NHL.com. She's Kirsten Kroll, the face of your Minnesota Wild. Joining us to kick off this week's episode, which is just two away from episode 200, we've got the man, the myth, the mullet, uh, Mr. Brian. What, what is the nickname? Do you have a nickname to go with that beautiful head of lettuce you're, you're rocking? I do. It's uh, the BC Gravy Train. I was not expecting that, but I love it. Can you give a little more information on how uh, you came up with that? Yeah, yeah, actually. So I have to give credit to my wife on that one. Um, and it goes back to when we started working together. I didn't show up for a shift and uh, she wanted me fired and I didn't get fired. And so she was mad at everyone, and she was like, well, I'm not hopping on this BC gravy train. And uh, so last year when I had to come up with a name for the the mullet championship, uh, she was like, well, you can't go with waterfall. You can't go with all that because that's what everyone has. Why don't you go with BC gravy train? And that's what uh, we went with. And it's stuck. You mentioned the championship. You are looking – to bring the mullet championship here to the state of hockey, because as we know here on Bar Down Beauties, mullets, lettuce, whatever you call your flow, it just go right. We like the shirt, grow the flow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It can't go wrong. Tell us about the championships and what exactly a mullet competition like this entails. So uh, this is the third year of the USA mullet championships. Um, and this one, the, the big one is all online. They had five qualifying in-person ones. I finished third in Iowa at uh, Denim Fest at uh, the mullet competition. And, uh, but it's, it's online. This is the third round, uh, third and final round. So it's uh, voting from um, people. Uh, there's donations that go towards Jared Allen's uh, Wounded Warrior, uh, Homes for Wounded Warriors. Um, and then there's a judge's score that hasn't changed since the first round. So um, the majority of the, the power of it is uh, people voting online. So it's, uh, it's been a whirlwind week and it's only started. Um, I'm really excited because it's five days of voting. The other rounds have only been three rounds of voting. Now, you flashed the shirt that said Grow the Flow. I also have to ask, how long did it take you to grow that? So this has been going since 2019. Um, There has been some trims on it here and there. Um, I did say in my profile on my uh, voting page that I think it takes about nine months to grow a mature mullet. Um, this is my, my second go around at a mullet in, in 2010 through about 2012. I had one for Jared Allen of the Vikings. Um, but otherwise I've always had short hair, um, ever since I was little, uh, this mullet almost didn't even make it to where it is now because when I proposed to my fiance, now wife, uh, I had a mullet and she told me, 
yes, I'll marry you, but you know, you have to cut the mullet. Mm. And I was kind of heartbroken at that. And she hadn't seen the wonderful curls yet. Um, they hadn't really got there. And it was a couple weeks before the wedding. She was like, you know, you have uh, really nice curls and you don't have to cut it for the wedding. And I was overjoyed about that. Now that's the curl a winning sealed wife. sealed the deal. Yes. Yeah, yes. And now I even joke with her that I'm going to cut it off. I'm not going to. But she says, absolutely, there's no way you're cutting it off. So, I mean, I think it's a win-win situation. I feel like I don't have curly hair in Kirsten. I don't know if your hair is that curly either. But do you have tips for, like, nope. the texture? Your texture looks beautiful, <laughs> too. I mean, that's yeah. equally as important to the whole mullet vibe you're giving. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, and again, that's uh, credit to my wife. Uh, she taught me about the scrunch technique when you get out of the shower. Uh, and I don't really use a whole lot of product. And, and I think it's better that way. It stays soft. If I do put product in it, I don't know. It just doesn't look as good to me. But uh, yeah, I go with the scrunch and then don't mess with it, as my wife tells me. So, um, but that's, yeah, it's... Uh, it's fun learning how to uh, put my hair in a ponytail for uh, to sleep at night. So uh, she says that I get way, way better at that, too. Who would have known that uh, I would have been able to put my hair in a, in a ponytail or a little bun at night to sleep? <laughs> I mean, it's now you know how us gals feel, right? Like, yeah, it's, yeah, there's right. a lot I mean, going a little... to it. A little bit. I, I know a little bit. I don't need to get into all of it, but the hair part, I can definitely... I can definitely sympathize with you ladies on that part. Okay. Going back to the competition, I have another question. So when it comes yes. to trying to like sell yourself to the judges or who you present yourself to, what do you do? Like, do you like do like a hair flip? Is there a way like you flash the mullet off or something that you say to kind of give a little more flair to seal the deal? So my tagline with this was the BC gravy train wild enough to take you out on the town classy enough to bring to grandma's Thanksgiving dinner. Um, but yes, there's also a mullet shake. Oh, for those of you just listening to the audio version, that was beautiful. Oh, the ha, full ha. vision. No, you're good. We just got to let them know <laughs> we're feeding it to all people. We want to make sure gotcha. that they get the full effect. It was beautiful. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, but the thing I say with my mullet is, is there's a lot of them out there that are like show mullets. And for a while, I thought that that was like a drawback because mine, it, I, I just, this is my everyday thing. I, that I have the mullet. It's, it's regular. I'm not going to put, I'm not going to dye it. I'm not going to try to make it America. You know, I'm, I'm just, I'm just Minnesota, BC. And, and that's, that's what my mullet is. And, and so at first I thought it was kind of a drawback because some of them are really, really flashy with the designs and everything. And, Mine's just, mine's me. And, and that's, I think, now I'm kind of owning that and it, it, it's just authentic to who I am. I love it. I love that. I feel like there's a whole underground mullet community that I'm not yet privy to. Oh, like I thought we saw it all with hockey <laughs> players, but maybe not. It is, it is wild. I've met people from all over the U.S. I've met people from Canada, um, people in Australia through mullet Facebook groups, um, Met a really good buddy in uh, from Austin, Minnesota. He was actually in the top 10 in the first year of the mullet competition. I got to be a part of his wedding. Um, and, I, yeah, I've met, I've met a ton of people. When I was down in Iowa, there was guys up from Florida for it. The owner and head of the uh, USA Mullet Championship, he was in from Michigan. And it, it was just a blast. That's too fun. So two final questions for you, Brian, AKA BC gravy train. Uh, first one, Minnesota wild player who has the best flow on the wild squad that you have seen, whether it's present or past, I'll give you, I'll open it up to you. Second question. How can people go vote for you and make sure that the mullet champion is a state of hockey born and raised, raised person. You put me on the spot on the, on the mullet flow for the, for the wild. And, and, I probably, I mean, Merrill is who comes to mind uh, for me. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I'm drawing a blank on it. I, I mean, there's got to be, 
there's got to be more. But yeah, Merrill, Merrill is who would pop to my mind for it. Um, and then voting. Um, so I have uh, a direct link that it, it's harder to say over there. But if you go to mulletchamp.com and search, you click on the main event, and then you can search either BC or the BC Gravy Train. And then you scroll down, there'll be like four pictures of me. You can scroll down and uh, click vote for this mullet. And you can do that once every 24 hours. Um, so you can, it, will, it won't let you vote if it hasn't been 24 hours. And then you can do that uh, per device. So you can do it once from a phone, once from a computer, once from a tablet. So you could... And there's other ways around it. If you switch your browser and stuff, people are messing with that. I, I don't know how to do all that, but some people are saying they're able to vote like five, six times. I know like three for sure ways that you can vote, but yeah, mulletchamp.com and search BC or the BC gravy train. I love it. Well, thank you so much for sharing your mullet with us to kick off hockey season with the regular season coming up on Thursday. We look forward to bringing that championship here to Minnesota. If there is, can we have like a parade maybe since West 7th yeah. may not see oh, it yeah. for a while? Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. And uh, I'll be there on Thursday at the XL to celebrate. I'm uh, uh, excited for it. Uh, I'm, you know, love hockey and uh, excited to bring the BC gravy train into the XL and maybe start their, uh, start their run towards the Stanley cup this year. Love it. Best of luck to you. I'm excited to hear how you do and to see all of the winning moments, winning pictures, whatever you got, send them our way. Thank you so much. I really appreciate being on this. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hey guys, Jesse Pierce of Bardown Beauty is here. Fall is the perfect time to get back to you and say hello to a healthier lifestyle. Livia Weight Control Centers wants to help you make the most of every single day. That's why if you join right now during Livia Days, which runs October 9th through the 14th, you will get six months absolutely free. Six months of free consulting, free dieting, all of the things you need to be successful in your weight loss. I'm down 30 pounds plus 19 inches. Could not be more happy. And that's thanks to Livia Weight Control Centers. Again, Call Livia today, 855-GO-LIVIA, or visit livia.com. That's www.livia.com. Join today, get six months free. It's as simple as that. Good luck, guys. All right, we are back. BC Gravy Train. Kirsten, remember that one time when I kind of had a mullet and I like thought about doing a mullet and I didn't actually do it? What do you think my name should have been, though, if I went full Ooh, throttle? I vividly remember I was there and my jaw dropped um, out of fear for you because I didn't know how far you were willing to take it. Um, and then the hair fell on the floor when you shaved the sides. But your name, I don't know. I feel like you have to have something authentic to your brand, right? That nothing, none of my brand lends itself to a mullet, which is probably why it's an extra good idea. I didn't, you know, commit to the bit to the bit. It's probably for the best. It is for the best. But as we'd mentioned, we just wanted to kick off the regular hockey season with a little bit of fun. So shout out to Brian for reaching out and sharing his mullet with us. Plenty of lettuce. Did you see Kirsten? So the Minnesota Wild kicking off their home opener, regular season opener on Thursday, hosting the Florida Panthers at XL Energy Center, 7 p.m. We'll dive into some lines into Jared Spurgeon, all of that. But did you notice, Kirsten, there is an advertisement at XL Energy Center on the big board that said, Jesus has led us to. I did see that. <laughs> I love the branding. I I don't know. I love the branding. It makes it very. I'm tr Fun. I'm trying to figure out my words here. Yeah, it makes it very enticing to all hockey fans. It is. It's just kind of. I didn't notice it until somebody pointed that out from the preseason game. Like, hey, Jesus has led us. I'm like, what are they talking about? And I'm like, oh. It's an advertisement, so mm -hmm. clever. Mark it to your people uh, again and go vote for Brian. Let's dive into that hockey talk, Kirsten. Uh, preseason went well. We both survived, which is, you know, A++ for us. Uh, beyond that, Jared Spurgeon, not starting the season out approximately three to four weeks, listed as week to week with his injury. Um, but Saturday, the defense didn't look too bad. You saw Alex Goligoski step up. Kalen Addison got in there. John Merrill uh, with his own mullet doing his thing. 
is the defense a little less concerning having seen what they were able to do against Dallas in that last preseason victory moving forward? I mean, as of right now, yes. I really personally try to take the preseason with a grain of salt. I don't know. Maybe players are more comfortable and relaxed just because they know it's essentially a meaningless game unless you're trying to really crack the roster and earn a spot. Um, so I can't help but think that plays a factor in it, but I really, really hope they keep some level of what they brought, especially in that last game against Dallas into the start of the regular season, because I was really impressed all around. I just thought the way they played against Dallas was a complete game top to bottom. So if we see some of that, it'll make me feel better with Spurgeon being out and giving him some time to, to actually recover from his injury and not try to rush back. Yeah, no, I would completely agree. The one thing that kind of stuck out to me too, in general, again, with the defense holding well, there was, it doesn't happen very often, but it did happen. And you don't get mad at me, Kirsten. Jonas Brodeen, he made a mistake. It was okay. He got beat. Brock Faber covered it up very, very nicely. He was able to get back. That pairing, you guys, I know we all wanted it to happen. We all knew it was going to happen, but it's looking even probably better than I imagined, all things considered, because again, Brock Faber starting his rookie season with his hero, Jonas Brodeen, um, and expected to fill the big skates of Matt Dumba a little bit there. I really, really like that pair. I do too. Love Jonas Brodeen. <laughs> loving me some Brock Faber. And you know, Brodeen, he's human. What can you do? You make a mistake here and there, and then you got your man back there to back you up. So yeah. best case scenario for those two. They'll figure it out. Another uh, point of emphasis this week going on on Saturday, Ryan Hartman obviously gets his extension three years, $4 million per year, so a total of 12 mil to Ryan Hartman. Limited no-move clause, and then the final year, full no-trade. Um, you know, Hartsey was playing Hartsey and I asked Bill Guerin on Saturday, Hey, do you expect him to go back to that 30 goal goal score that he was two seasons ago in order to kind of live up to that? And, and Guerin said, no, we, we just want him to play tough, but we don't want him to take stupid penalties. Well, the first thing Hartsman did in Saturday's game was go out there and take a penalty that aside, Kirsten, are we excited to have Ryan Hartman for the three years? Another one of those pending UFAs locked up where it keeps the core together, sure, but it also means you keep a core that's been bounced out of the first round in the past couple of years together as well. I feel like there's just so much that I want to say on this that I don't necessarily know where to start. I will start by saying I'm happy all three of them are coming back. I'm happy they're locked in, happy it got done early, but I say that a little hesitant because I also feel at the same time it could could have waited a little longer into the season once we start seeing more of how they are this year, as opposed to just based on last season and what we've seen from them in the past. Sure. Um, but I think those are veteran guys, especially with, they talk about the identity of the team, what they're building. Those are core guys with, that are going along with the plan. I don't fully know what Bill Guerin's greater vision is, what his plan is, but a guy that has multiple Stanley cups under his belt, I'm going to trust a little bit, even if I don't see it fully in the moment, Hartman probably got paid a little bit more than I anticipated or would have liked to sign him for. But I mean, part of that, and we talked about this, Jesse, after that game the other night, part of it's probably to make up for just how underpaid he was right. the last few years. And you made a great point too, because you mentioned like when you have a guy you go up to and you ask him to take a pay cut and he says, yes, he'll do it. That's huge. And that speaks more to your character than anything. And we know how much too, just like these character guys mean to this organization, but happy Hartman's back would really hope to see less penalties from him. As you <laughs> mentioned at the start, because I also remember making a TikTok referencing all the penalties he took last season. So mm -hmm. that kind of sums up all my thoughts there. It's a fine line, you know, and, and we've obviously broken down kind of the different aspects. We've talked about the depth of the middle. We've talked about Marco Rossi. We've talked about goaltending. We are ready to go and drop the puck on Thursday. But Kirsten, final question before we kick off the regular season Thursday, how important is it that Minnesota gets off to a better start than they did last year? And by better, I mean, they don't lose three straight and allow whatever that was, 13 goals or what have you, um, you know, tough competition. The first two games primarily, right? You're hosting Florida mm -hmm. at home, a team that really showed what they were made of last year. Um, and then you go to Toronto, a team that is a heavy favorite to maybe come out of the East. Uh, how crucial it is for, is it going to be Kirsten for Minnesota to come out full throttle, get a victory, or at least just not get embarrassed out there uh, offensively. For sure. I think it's probably a lot more crucial as far as, 
keeping the fans faith high and also to sell tickets in our own arena. Right. I think from that standpoint, it's crucial um, because also when they did get off to that losing skip to start the year, like we saw the ticket prices and all that drop just from the financial standpoint, if that does happen again, I mean, just looking in hindsight now, cause I know we all were up in arms at the start of last season when they started just getting off to that really bad stretch and it was really bad. So that's not trying to sugarcoat it by any means, but the way the season ended up, they made it into the playoffs. Granted, yeah, we got bounced first round, but we made it there, which was a lot more than we expected when we saw, saw the year start off that way. So Fair. this year, I'm going to try to go in a little more calm if it does happen. Um, just knowing it's a long stretch. It matters when you get hot further down the stretch, mainly after Christmas. So I'm going to keep the hope until then. But I think to win some games at the start of the year is probably a lot more important for the younger guys, such as Marco Rossi, to keep their confidence up. And then yeah. when you do see people start pointing fingers and throwing the blame around, just making sure like they know, like, hey, just having that second confidence to know that they're doing the right things. I'm immediately pointing fingers at Marco Rossi if this all goes awry. That's the first one. Trade him. Get him out. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Jokes. We got jokes. Uh, I think it's also important if you're starting Philip Gustafson and if you're putting him in in that number one position, like we're kind of all guessing he is, I think you want to make sure he is ready for that. I mean, we spoke with Gus after uh, Saturday's final preseason game. He's obviously ready. He's always ready, but he recognizes it's a different year. There's a different vibe to it for him. Uh, he's also a new dad, which he said it's weird taking care of somebody else and not just myself, which I love for him. Just adorable. Uh, but cannot wait. Uh, we've got some fun things planned for Thursday, including a soda stick, Bardom Beauties merch window opening up. Stay tuned to our social media channels for that. Uh, an exclusive window starting Thursday. Should be exciting because who doesn't want some Bardom Beauties? merch and gear i know i could always use some more kirsten could always use some more good news for you we will also have a bar down beauty soda stick giveaway coming up for our 200th episode along with some other fun things so stay tuned kirsten prediction for thursday win loss draw hmm i think the wild are gonna win okay i think they're going to win and I don't know. I, this was probably a hot take. It's the start of the season. You don't really know how it's going to go and how the competition's going to fare. I don't know if there's going to be any Stanley Cup final hangover despite falling in the finals from Florida or not. We'll find out. But I just think I'm just so impressed with how the team played against Dallas in that final preseason game that the hopes are high right now. And I'm feeling pretty confident because, like I said, that game, it just felt like – it was a regular season game where there was a little bit more on the line. I don't know if it's just because these guys hate each other mm -hmm. and there's that rivalry instilled, which I love or what it was, but it was a really fun game. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I, I'm excited to see what that bodes for the regular season for sure. There was, there was some feistiness out there. We like to see the feistiness, uh, which I think Florida will bring on Thursday as well. I'll give him a I win. want another Pat Maroon fight too. Mm -hmm. I loved that. I think I think that gave a preview for just how excited I am to have Pat Maroon on our team this year. I mean, last year when we got Ryan Reeves, everyone was excited. But to be honest, I expected a little bit more from him. And I was having this conversation with somebody the other night too. I was like, I don't know if it's because people were just more scared to fight Ryan Reeves so that people <laughs> didn't. But I definitely expected a lot more from that toughness standpoint from Reeves. And I just don't feel like we fully saw it. So seeing that from Maroon, I'm like, yes, let's bring it this year. Yeah, that was, that was fun. Things got a little testy on Saturday, guys. Let's not throw popcorn. Even if it is Jamie Ben. let's not throw popcorn <laughs> into the penalty box. I just think that's not great. Uh, but all in all, again, season kicks off Thursday, which means more of the buttes, more giveaways, more content, all of the good stuff that you love. Uh, appreciate every single one of you. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, share, all of the good things. Shout out to Talk North, Soda Stick, uh, Jim Beam, Royal Credit Union, Grain Belt, our next Grain Belt live show coming up October 18th at Jersey's in Invergrove Heights, 7 p.m. Uh, also shout out to Livia for the weight loss tips and no chips. I don't know. I don't. I was going to try to rhyme that. For the know. tips and no chips. <laughs> the ironic thing is I eat... <laughs> They're Livia chips all the time. I don't know. Shout out to them as well. Again, you can mention Bardown Beauties on any of those things we mentioned for discounts, deals, all that good stuff. Uh, on behalf of Kirsten and Fred and myself, have a wonderful rest of your week and let's play hockey. Go wild.
Barry, near, 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 near.